Do you know the difference between sciatica and piriformis syndrome? Well, they both cause the same symptoms, but they're actually two different conditions that need to be treated differently. In today's video, Dr. David Oliver, who's a chiropractor, is gonna tell you about that difference. True sciatica and piriformis syndrome are often confused. They are two separate conditions, but they share very similar characteristics and symptoms. The word sciatica is actually the issue here. Sciatica is really just symptoms. Sciatica is essentially irritation to the sciatic nerve, which causes pain to go down your leg. So your sciatic nerve comes out of your lumbar spine here, your low back, and it goes down through your butt and goes down your, the back of your leg. True sciatica comes from usually some sort of impingement along the lumbar nerve roots. The most common cause of that is a herniation of a disc. So if you have a herniation of a disc, just as in right here, you can see an impingement upon the nerve root, which can affect that sciatic nerve, which will cause sciatic symptoms. Piriformis syndrome, on the other hand, is due to sciatic type symptoms as well. This is where this gets confusing. But you have a piriformis muscle, which attaches, this is your sacrum, it's the base of your spine, it goes from your sacrum to your hip, and attaches right there. It's a thin muscle, it's not a huge muscle, but it's a muscle that goes right there, and your sciatic nerve actually runs underneath that. If your piriformis muscle is dysfunctional or too tight or in spasm, it can compress against that sciatic nerve and give you symptoms down the leg. So the real difference here is where the problem is. Either it's in the low back or it's in the butt in the piriformis muscle itself. So with any type of sciatica type symptoms, so any pain going down the sciatic nerve, you can get everything from shooting, burning pain, numbness and tingling, or even spasms that occur in the leg. So you're looking for a variety of symptoms that travel down the back of the leg, essentially from the hamstring into the calf. That's generally the course of sciatica type symptoms. You can get them into the foot as well, but we're looking for generally pain, radicular pain or sciatica type pain that travels down the back of the leg. So if you have true sciatica, again, or piriformis syndrome, you can get very similar symptoms and it's very confusing, but you need to differentiate this and there's a couple different ways you can look at this. Most people with true sciatica or lumbar disc herniation that's causing sciatica will have more pain when they sit. Because when you sit, you compress the disc, which causes more herniation or more progression of the, of the, of the problem. Impinging the nerve gives more symptoms. Whereas with, when you stand, you generally feel at least a little bit better. This is not a definitive rule, but it's general case for most people with this. Whereas with piriformis syndrome, when you sit, you might not have as much symptoms. You might, your symptoms might be increased actually when you stand, and when you stand, you actually tense that muscle a little more, and it can put more compression against the sciatic nerve. So that's one way to differentiate it. The other way is to go through a few tests to just to see. The simplest one for the piriformis is just touch it. So literally take your hand or a finger and just kind of poke it around in your butt. And again, you're looking for the hip and the sacrum. So to find your hip, if you go right on the side of here, there's a bone and kind of knobby bone. If you turn your leg in and out, it's called your greater trochanter. If you go from there and slide inward with your thumb and just kind of poke around, if it feels really tender, one side versus another, you may have piriformis syndrome that's contributing to your symptoms. The other way to test for the piriformis, besides just palpating around and touching it, is if you lay on your back, lay on your bed or lay on the floor, and you're gonna essentially grab that knee as you bring it towards you and you're gonna bring it across your body. If you feel a lot of tenderness or a lot of pain in your butt compared to the other side, that's more of a sign that it's a, that's a symptom of your piriformis. If you're looking for a self-test for your low back or more of a true sciatica or, or a symptom coming from the lumbar spine, this slump test is really important. That's where you kind of sit in a chair and you really kind of slouch into bad posture and really hunch your head towards your legs and see if that increases your symptoms. If it does, that's more of an indication that it's coming from your low back. It is confusing, but they are two separate conditions and it's important we treat them separately. So piriformis syndrome, if it's just piriformis syndrome, we can get away with doing a lot more generally because we can go into more stretches that involve a little bit of flexion. So you might see the standard figure four stretch where you cross one leg over and you pull the leg towards you. You can do just simple ball work or soft tissue work on the piriformis muscle and just try to release it. <clears throat> Generally, we get more response from that. Whereas if it's a true sciatica symptom or a true lumbar radiculopathy coming from your low back, we wanna look at trying to decompress that. So we don't really wanna go into a flexion type stress because you can make it worse. A couple of those exercises for the sciatica could be that cat-cow, that gentle mobilization of the spine or that prone press-up. 
Again, we have other videos you can reference back to this. You have to go through these exercises extremely slowly to make sure they're the right ones for you. But again, it's really important to differentiate. Is it coming from your back or is it coming from your butt? And you treat each one accordingly. All right, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a like as well as subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this. Also, if you'd like us to send you three exercises to correct your forward head and rounded shoulder posture, you know, the slouch posture that a lot of people are suffering from today, we'd love to send you three exercises to help you fix that. If you'd like to get them, there's gonna be a link here on the video somewhere, or there's gonna be a link down below in the description. Just go to that page, enter your email information, and we'll send you these videos right away.